Hi guys, uh, Owen here from Luxaber again and nothing to do with lighting on this video. Uh, every now and then I like to try and repair stuff as you may have seen in a couple of other videos. Normally tools and stuff but it can be anything. Um, the other day I was in the middle of vacuuming with my little old uh, vacuum which has been pretty reliable actually, this little old Bosch and just suddenly stopped working. Out of the blue, no signs, no smells of burning or anything at all. So like anything, I always say, if it's broken and it's not working, it's probably not going to be cost effective to actually take to a professional and have it repaired because it'd probably be cheaper to go and buy a new vacuum. But I can, I hate putting stuff in landfill if it can be avoided, which although some parts will be recycled, majority of it will just end up in landfill, which is really a shame. So I took it apart very quickly. I've already found the fault. It was dead simple. And on these basic little old vacuums, it can be really common. So I'm going to show you exactly what it was. It's super easy for anyone to do, really. So, uh, yeah, I'll show you exactly what it was and how I'm going to fix it. Now, I know obviously it's not going to be the same case with every single model of vacuum, especially more advanced ones and with more techie bits on. But for something super basic like these sort of models, oh, just really couldn't be simple. I've taken the hose off, taken the bag out, which is there, and then literally one two three four little torque screws that's the power switch by the way which also adjusts the uh the power so you take out those four screws that lifts off and this is what i love about the cheaper models in many occasions there's really so little to go wrong so it's not plugged in at the moment so obviously be careful but like i say it just died completely there's absolutely nothing no smell of burning, not even a clicking or low power, anything at all. So super simple. Um, obviously, you've got your very basic circuitry board there, which allows you to adjust the power with the switch and turn it on and off. And you've got your mains cables going over to the electric motor. That is it. Couldn't be simpler. Um, now, if it wasn't as obvious as what it was, then my first step would have been to plug it in, you know, very safely and carefully. I'll put my meter on those two terminals there, switch it on, make sure there's power going to it, because if there's not, then that's a fault sort of like before the motor. But if there is power, then it means the problem is here after. Uh, I didn't have to do that because in removing the two terminals, it allows you to simply lift out the motor. And I've actually had this on another model previously before. Let's take it over to the light. And it's super simple. So you got your two brushes, your two uh, carbons that go onto the the motor there, left and right. Now, on another model I've done on these, it's kind of a stupid design really, considering it's something that's going to get dusty and dirty. So that little tab you can see bent down there, that is what gives the power to the brushes. And these literally just slide in and wedge themselves in place. So the only contact for the main power of the motor comes through that little tab there, which is kind of bent down. And then the idea is you push these in and it simply just connects to it roughly here, where I've just very quickly cleaned it up a little bit of a wire brush. So if that's not a good connection, which it isn't, because metal on metal you're quite often going to get a little bit of grime and grease and whatever. I mean, that's the underside, luckily. But you can see this is only a few years old and it's just it's such a typical sort of problem with something like this. So always worth having a look at. And even the one on the other side doesn't look too great at all. I'm just going to take that out as well, where you can see how simple and simply they come out. Same thing, clean it right up. Uh, and then, yeah get a much better contact I'll clean up the top of both of them and clean up the two tabs bend them down slightly more put a bit of contact cleaner on it and they're not even held in very well at all I sort of thought it looked like something snapped off but it hasn't they just sort of wedge themselves in place so I'm going to quickly clean them up and then I'll probably just put some uh, epoxy or just something to hold them in place to stop them moving even further but yeah I mean there's loads of life left in there brushes there's plenty of uh carbon left in there and stuff and hopefully that's all it is i'm pretty sure it is because it looks quite obvious but anyway i'm going to do that now
Okay, again, super simple, back together. Quick test, plug it in. Hope for the best. So there you go, super simple fix. Uh, you don't need any expert tools or anything like that really. And uh, Honestly, I can't explain how many times that when it is something pretty simple, it's always worth having a look. Like I say, if it's broken and it's not feasible to take it and have a shop repair it or something, then what have you got to lose? As long as you're safe and you don't kill yourself, then there really is nothing to lose. Voila, hopefully it's helped. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next one.